This is the bed that I sewed up with seed just a couple of videos ago. And I've also since then planted out some lettuce here in the center and everything is flourishing. Leafy green spinach here. I've got some bunching onions. There's lettuces, all sorts. Some of the seeds are even up and they are flourishing because it's been quite moist recently and also because of this, because of compost. Now compost is the most important material that an organic gardener can use. It feeds the soil, it feeds plants, it protects the soil when you use it as a mulch. But if you buy it in, it can be crazy expensive. And so that's why we have to learn how to make compost to save money and also to be a little bit more environmentally friendly and to have a bountiful garden. Now, there are loads of ways to make compost. And one of them, one that has become really important to my system is Bokashi. And it is a way to safely and without any odors compost troublesome waste like cooked food, like meat, like dairy, small bones, and even pet waste. And so if you've not heard about Bokashi before, you're in for a treat and also, it's starting to rain now and fortunately Bokashi happens in the house so let's go in out of the weather let's have a closer look at this so we'll put the food scraps aside. This container is for the wormery and I will show you the wormery in another video. So anything that I know that the worms will enjoy devouring goes in here. So banana skins, tea bags, bits of peppers. I don't put any onion skins or anything from the onion family in there or citrus. They and everything else go into the Pikachu bin. Now the Bokashi bin is a sealed environment. It's a bucket and it has a very tight fitting lid on the top, which you need to keep tight. It also has a tap down here and you use the tap to release excess moisture. And then this here, this is a little stamper for stamping down the food inside. And I'll just open this up. You can see it's bulging here. It's very full, which is why I thought it was a good opportunity to make this video because I need to set up a new one after this. Now inside, you can see all of the food waste for the, the last month or so. And there's everything in there from little bits of mushroom. I can see coffee grounds, loads of coffee grounds. Again, the onion skins. And also you'll see there's a bit of mold over there as well, which is a good sign. It's a sign that the Bokashi is working and that this is fermenting and becoming a lot more of a pre-compost type of material that will break down easily. And I do have to say there is a little tiny bit of a smell, but it's not bad. It's not like food rotting. It's a combination of the Bokashi brand and just the food that's in there. All right, let's put this lid back on a little bit more tightly. Everything organic will eventually become compost. And when I say organic, I mean plants, animals, people, the waste that we make. It is the natural way of things. Microbes and fungi and weather and other small organisms break us down after we die. We get returned to the soil and that helps to feed a new generation of living beings. It's just the way that it works here on our planet. And it's a good thing. And gardeners have learned how to harness those processes in our compost piles and other ways of creating compost so that we can use the waste that's left over from our gardens and from our homes to make nutrient rich compost to feed the soil. Compost is incredibly important. When you think about it, you sow seeds, you raise plants, they're using nutrients from the soil as they grow. And if you cut 
them, harvest them, take them out of the soil, you're removing those nutrients. And so if you take something, you have to give it back in order for you to have a productive and bountiful garden. It's just common sense. Now in the garden, we use a lot of green waste to make compost. So lawn clippings and uh, bits of cardboard, even sticks, anything left over from our harvesting actions, weeds, and those are all really simple and easy to compost. Manure too, I use a lot of horse manure in the garden, as you already know, because I've done an entire video about it. All of those materials are pretty straightforward and they don't tend to smell too much if you stack them correctly and they also don't attract vermin. But there's a resource that's a little bit trickier. Now, in the past I have always incorporated uncooked food waste in the compost pile. So mainly vegetable scraps like this. But what about dairy? What about meat products, small bones, uh, cooked foods, stuff like pasta and um, rice. A lot of people do have leftover bits and bobs after meals or that has been in the refrigerator for weeks and we end up binning it, so throwing it away because it's a little bit difficult to incorporate it into our compost piles if we don't want to have bad smells that make the neighbors upset or that attract rats or in other parts of the world, raccoons and bears. We just don't want that happening in our compost piles. So what do we do? Now, most people do tend to throw it away and that presents a couple of problems. In many places in the world, when you throw away food, it gets taken to a landfill where it's quickly covered up and it doesn't have a chance to break down naturally as it would do if it was left on the surface where oxygen is. So in that anaerobic uh, environment, it gets buried and eventually it releases greenhouse gases, which we know isn't great. Also, we are losing an incredible nutrient rich resource when we throw food away. And I don't know about you, but Seeing that going into the bin, whether it's in your own home or in other people's homes, you look at it and you think, there's gotta be something I can do with this to be able to use it in the garden. And there is, and it is this. It's a Bokashi bin. I have it here in the kitchen. You can DIY these or you can buy these. And it is a closed bucket. There's no smells whatsoever when it's closed. And when you open it up, it doesn't smell that bad at all. And so everything goes in here with the Bokashi brand. And what happens in here is that it ferments. And the magic that happens in here means that I can pre-compost that food and essentially pickle it to the point where I can then put it out into the compost pile or I can dig it into the garden. And so this stops any food waste from our home going into the bin and it helps to basically recycle it into nutrient-rich compost that I can put right out on those garden beds. This is a brand new Pakashi bin that I'm going to get set up because as you just saw, the one up here is completely full. And I would say the average person, the average family only need two buckets in their home. One to be filling and one to leave to set for a couple of weeks after it's full before you put it out into the, the garden or the compost. Now, you can DIY these with a couple of buckets and I have instructions over on my website. So if you want to go and visit lovelygreens.com, there are instructions on how to make them. Now, once one of these arrives, make sure that the lid is really tight fitting. And I've bought these before and the lids arrived and they did not seal. And if they do not seal, then the Bokashi is not going to work. So make sure that it fully seals before you start using it. That's sorted. Inside, usually you'll be sent some Bokashi brand with a, with a kit and you'll have to continuously buy this. This is something that is absolutely necessary for Bokashi composting. It's not expensive at all. And one of these will last, I don't know, six months or so. 
So it's perfectly affordable. And what this stuff is, is it's usually wheat bran or rice bran that has been inoculated with molasses or sugar and also the microbes that are necessary for bokashi composting. So the microbes that will ferment the food that's inside. Also inside these kits, there's usually some kind of instruction manual. I ignore the scoop that is usually sent in these kits. When you are measuring out Bokashi brand, I just use a very small handful. It's just easier to use your hand and then sprinkle it over the top. So recycle that or use it if you'd like. There's also a tap that comes in these kits and they will have some rubber washers on them. The tap fits in pretty easily down the bottom. You just insert it through the front and then through the inside, you put the other rubber washer on and then screw it together. And then once you have the tap in, then you put the little screen in the bottom here. So the screen is important because it keeps the solid food up above and any excess liquid that drains from that food down below where you can drain it off. Once you have the bokashi bin set up, you can start using it immediately. And so I'm just going to put in these scraps from last night. And I'm also going to be putting in the egg white residue from the pan from Josh's breakfast. I don't eat eggs, but Josh does. In they go. Your set will also usually come with one of these you can use it or you can use your hand and you do have to press down the food to reduce any kind of air in there. As the material breaks down, it will start to compact at the bottom anyway from the weight of everything on top and reducing the air in here is really important for getting that Bokashi going. Now, the Bokashi brand, this is a bag that I have open already. I opened this uh, beginning of December of last year. So actually this is probably good for a good year, six months to a year, one of these bags. And I'm just gonna take a very small handful. Every time you put food in here, you need to put in some Bokashi bran. And that's about how much I use at a time and just sprinkle it on top. And then after that, you seal the top. And then the next time you have food waste, you repeat this process. So you have that layer of food, Bokashi bran, smush it down, build it up. And then you also need to periodically remove the liquid from the tap. So I would say every few days to a week, open up that tap and remove any of that liquid. And you can use that diluted as a plant feed. I've got my new Bokashi bin set up. So now I'm gonna take this old filled one out to the greenhouse. And when you have a filled Bokashi bin, you can leave it in the house, you can put it in the garage, you can put it in the greenhouse, just someplace that is quite warm because that will help to speed up the fermentation process. This is gonna be quite heavy, I think. Oi. <laughs> So I'm gonna take this out to the greenhouse. We've got a couple more out there and we'll have a look. Despite the drizzly weather outside, it's nice and warm and dry in here in the greenhouse. The tomatoes are growing by leaps and bounds. We're a little bit behind on getting the beds sorted in the polycrub just because of the weather. And also Josh has developed some sciatica. In any case, you may have spotted these bins underneath the bench in the greenhouse before and wondered what they were. These are two Bokashis that are filled and I put them in here to finish the fermentation. Now one of them is actually from the beginning of the year and I put it in here because in the cold, the Bokashi takes a little bit more time to ferment. But if we lift up the lid, we can see that lovely white mold developed. And that's a really good sign. That means that the Bokashi has successfully fermented this stuff. Now, this is pre-compost. It's not true compost just yet. What Bokashi does is it speeds up that process. It also pickles 
all of that food waste and makes it unpalatable for vermin. And so the next step is taking this out to the compost pile. It's still pretty wet, but hey ho, that's the gardener's life. When you have a completed bokashi, you can either bury it in the garden and you want to bury it under, I guess, about six inches, six inches to 12 inches of soil. Don't put it too close to any plants initially because it is acidic at first. I think probably the best thing to do with it is actually putting it into your compost pile. Now, when you put it into your compost pile, you do have to break it up a bit. You can't just, you can't just leave it in a big block. So tip it out into your compost. <laughs> Yummy. <laughs> and then uh, make sure that you get that screen because it will come flying out. And then what you'll want to do is just break the block up into the other material in your compost pile. So you'll have bits of straw, grass, bits of leaves, weeds, just break it up into that and it will break down safely without too much odor. And this will help you to create some really rich compost while saving all of those scraps. You're reducing waste, you're recycling it, you're putting it back into your garden and you're increasing the nutrition of your soil and of your future vegetables. There's really nothing to lose when it comes to Bokashi composting. I tend to choose days that are pretty sunny to make videos, but it's just worked out today that it's been absolutely chucking it down. And I hope that I have introduced you to what I see as a really important way to start composting inside, regardless of the weather. There are just so many benefits of Bokashi composting and it fits into my normal composting system. I have typical compost piles here, but Bokashi allows me to use all of that kitchen waste that is troublesome, that might cause foul odors, that might attract vermin, that might only be able to be binned and sent to the landfill in the past. And I can use all of that to create compost for the garden. There is even a Bokashi method, a variation that you can use to compost pet waste. So if you have a cat or a dog, all of their poo can be safely composted. All of the pathogens are killed off in the process. And then you can use that in the garden as well. It's just simply incredible. Now, the bins that I am using, these are either purchased or gifted and they're fantastic. I would recommend them, but you can make your own Bokashi bins using maybe stuff that you have lying around the house or at the garage. And you can even make your own Bokashi brand. So you don't even have to buy that if you don't want to, which makes it a, a really affordable type of composting process if you're trying to save money. But again, you can buy them like I do, and it's just an easier way to keep that system going. If you would like to learn more about how to create your own DIY Bokashi bin, you can head over to my website. I'll leave a link down in the video description and you'll learn a little bit more about Bokashi and also how to upcycle buckets into your own bin. I hope this has been really helpful for you. Let me know in the comments below if you use Bokashi or if you have any questions about the process whatsoever. And thank you again for watching. I'll see you next week for another video here on Lovely Greens. And I promise you, we're going to be back in the polycrub. It's time to get those beds sorted and the tomatoes planted. Bye for now.